Welcome to McNulty's Book Corral. Okay, listen, this is what happened. I walked into the comic shop this week, and what do you think I discovered? You'll remember in a previous episode, I was showing you the trade paperbacks uh, that DC was putting out, compiling the Golden Age Superman, the Batman, then they were doing some Silver Age, etc. Great, great way to get the classic comic books reprinted for uh, an audience. Um, DC, unfortunately, has stopped that. They seem to be imploding, imploding, exploding, and falling apart. Um, and yet I found out that Marvel has now started doing it, and they're doing it better than DC was doing it. Um, so <clears throat> apparently the Spider-Man one was already on the market. I didn't get that yet. But they're reprinting their classic Marvel series in these paperback editions, usually printing, reprinting the first ten. So here's Journey into Mystery, the first ten featuring the uh, first appearance of the Mighty Thor. This is incredible. Guess what this cost? $15.99, okay? So that is a low cost for a beautiful, beautiful book. Look at this. Look at the colors. And on the back, you get the covers as well. The covers are included here. This is Stanley and Jack Kirby at their finest. Um, the, to me, the early Thors were always the best. And what you get with this, you get the world of imagination. You get great writing. You get um, stories that Stan Lee wrote and Jack Kirby um, visualized that made you want to keep reading. You had an emotional investment in the characters. You cared about them because it was an imaginative, it was fun, it was good versus evil. It was just great popcorn style B-movie entertainment and it was brilliant. Um, and that's what Stan Lee and Jack Kirby in those early Marvel comics did. Look at the look at this look at the visuals here. This is the early Thors, and this is, they're going to continue doing these. So I was really excited to sit down. Actually, I, I went to bed and read this, um, and it was, it's exciting uh, to read these again. They're, they're easy to read. The reproductions are brilliantly done, fully realized with great colors, true to the originals. So here's Thor, the way Thor should be presented. I can't wait for the next volume. Fifteen bucks. In, in pocket change for this. Um, congratulations to Marvel. You guys are, uh, you know, I, I'm glad to see somebody's listening. It's a shame DC nosedived. So in addition to that, I picked up the Fantastic Four. And this, again, is Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. Larry Lieber, uh, who was Stan Lee's brother, had a hand in some of the scripts on these as well, by the way. <clears throat> and a few other artists. I think Don Heck is, in, is included in the Thor Later issues here, uh, maybe eight and nine. Anyway, the Fantastic Four. Again, what you get here is an incredible world of imagination. And with, you know, here's the Doctor Doom stories. Those early Doctor Doom stories were just so beautiful. Um, I mean, this is, these are beautiful editions. So I just wish that and hope that these books get in the hands of young readers. Um, I told the comic shop, which is Modern Age Comics, by the way, in Algonquin, Illinois, give them a plug. Um, you know, get get these and bring these in because not only just for me, but for young readers that are interested in the history of these books. And the originals are a little pricey these days. Uh, you know, the Fantastic Four stuff is Stan Lee and Jack Kirby absolutely at their finest. Look at this stuff. This is so much fun. There's actually, I mean, these books had a sense of humor. Stan, Stan Lee was a much better writer than the revisionist critics of today are giving him credit for. Um, there's a bit in the Fantastic Four where the Human Torch is reading the Hulk comic book, which Marvel had just put out. And he looks at Ben Grimm, the thing, and says, hey, he kind of reminds me of you. <laughs> and that starts them off with a little tussle. Uh, really fun uh, things to that they did in these books. Um but the stories were fascinating to read. You cared about the characters. You wanted to know what happened. So kudos to Marvel Comics for putting out this classic material long last in a, an affordable form. Now, the Marvel Masterworks series has been on the market for decades. Um, but they're expensive. They're even more expensive now than when they were originally published. Those are hardcover reproductions. This is the format, guys. This is it. This trade paperback format... Maybe they're too big for trade paperbacks, but this is the, or too small, I'm not sure, but this is the format to use to 
get this classic material reprinted uh, for people. The only downside that I can see is on the back it says it's a limited print run. So you have to talk to your comic shop or go on Amazon and find these. It's not under Marvel Masterworks. It's on These are found on, on Amazon under Mighty Marvel Masterworks. And then you'll see these covers um, and so forth. There is a variant cover. I don't want the variant covers. I want the original covers. So I just wanted to get this out there really quick for you guys because, um, you know, I love the Marvel movies. I don't like the DC movies. You know, um, the Marvel movies are classics. What they have done with that, that film series is just really historic and exciting and fun, as were these books. So they're coming up next. I think they're going to have Tales of Suspense. They're going to do the Iron Man, Captain America. They're going to do Daredevil. They're going to do the Avengers. Uh, I think one of one or two of these is coming out in the next couple of weeks. And onward and onward, okay? So let's hope they do other stuff, too, like uh, The Rawhide Kid. That was a great series. Or Ghost Rider. Or, you know, the, the early uh, uh, Shang-Chi Kung Fu. I'm sure they will. Anyway, I just wanted to get this one out there to you guys. So uh, stay well, stay happy. Feed your brain. Read a book. What?